Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Playbill and the Growing Studios, the Broadway Q&A series. I'm Johnny DeVelson, and I'm going to be monitoring today's session. Um, make sure you tune in um, on Wednesday for Kathleen Marshall and Friday, where we'll have Marymount Manhattan and Manhattan School of Music. Uh, today's guest is very exciting. He has helped written tons and tons of Broadway musicals. So I would love to introduce Mr. Tom Kitt. Thanks, John. Hi. Hey, very happy to be here. How are you today? I'm doing okay. Doing okay. Yeah, it's hot here in New York City, but uh, other I than that, see that. Yeah. all right. So, is that where you've been quarantine quarantining? Yeah, pretty much since the uh, whole time. Yeah, we've been uh, uh, we've been up north a little bit, but um, but mostly here. Gotcha. How is it in the city? What's the what's it like? How's the climate? Um, you know, it's uh, since we've seen it from the beginning, it's much different uh, today. Um, it's pretty remarkable how how things have shifted, and uh, uh, you can see there's a, a a lot of people now, um, you know, on the streets. Everyone being uh, sensible and, and careful, but um, there's also uh, outdoor dining now, so um, it's very nice to see people out. Um, and um, uh, we've been out to dinner a couple times, and. Um, it just makes you feel like like normalcy is creeping back in in, in some ways. Yeah, that's yeah. so nice. For the New York City people, what, what where did you go out to dinner? What was your favorite? Uh, there's a couple of places on the Upper West Side on the Columbus Strip um, in the 80s. Uh, we've been to a few places. There's a, a wonderful restaurant called Bella Luna, um, which is up on Columbus. And um, uh, a new restaurant that opened, um, I think, called Consulate. Um, which is on 85th in Columbus, but um, really that whole strip, it's, 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 it's very nice. Um, they've done a really great job of, of making it feel, um, giving it a nice neighborhood feel and, um, and people are taking advantage. Awesome, that's so exciting. Well, I wanted to start off today with playing a game because games just make everything so much better. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> this is a game that I like to call, is that my lyric with a question mark because, I'm going to be reading out loud to you something that obviously you've written, but there are going to be a couple of changes. And I want to see if you can tell me if that's actually your lyric or not. And where are the mistakes in your lyric? Oh, wow. And now <laughs> these are going to be things that I've written, not necessarily things that Brian, Yorkie, or... Um, I, these are wow. these, these are things that you've written that I think are pretty... Uh, I think they're pretty easy. Um, okay that I think that you should be able to get. So let's get started. I only have two for you. Um, hopefully, I think that both of them will be uh, pretty good for you. My ring light is like moving all over the place. Okay, so this first one is from Bring It On. Okay. Um, song Killer Instinct. Okay. Okay, so the lyrics I will read out to you. And this is, I'm reading out to you the incorrect version now. So you have. You need that killer instant to give you the nerve to grab everything you've wanted in life but may not deserve. So it's uh, to grab everything you want in life. But uh -huh. not. There you go. You're already a winner. You're one for two. I don't know uh, what you I, win I, if I, you get both of them. <laughs> and I also have to say that's an Amanda Green lyric. So um, uh -huh. Amanda's work. <laughs> but you've worked on it and you knew the answer. Yes. That's a song we wrote together, yes. Nice. Okay, so this next one, this next one should be pretty easy uh, for you, I think. It wasn't easy for me when I had to sing it for my juries, let me tell you. My voice teacher would sit there and she would, uh, every time I would say a wrong lyric, she would just raise her hand as I was singing it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this one is from I'm Alive from Next to Normal. Okay. Um, and the lyric is, I'm your wish, your dream come true, and, my, and I am your blackest nightmare too. I've known you, I own you. And I am your darkest nightmare too. Um, and then I think the rest is correct. Ah, uh, I think that you're missing something. I'm your wish, your dream come true, and I am your darkest nightmare true. I've shown you. Uh -huh. Aha! Got it, got it. And that's I Brian Dorky lyric. So I'm, uh, I'm helping out Amanda and Brian today. <laughs> today, you're playing for both of them. Awesome. Dog in, the, in the background playing, by the way, too. This is uh, this is Lucky who. 
Oh. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, let's get one question from uh, our viewers that they've asked. So I'm going to ask a question from Jeffrey Care from Raleigh, North Carolina. Okay. And he wants to know, were there ever any plans to adapt Next to Normal into a feature film? And if not, is that something you'd be interested in doing one day? Uh, that's a great question. Um, there were uh, some conversations, especially early on when we were um, still running at the Booth Theater. Um, and um, it, it, it didn't get to the place of ever um, generating a script. Uh, there were just meetings, conversations, some really exciting people, people that both Brian and I revere um, looked at it and, 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 and some had interest and, um, but it never materialized. Um, and, uh, I think at this stage, there's no plans for, uh, a next normal feature film, but, um, uh, just to speak for myself, um, I, I think that would be pretty thrilling if it happened, but of course it would have to be the right, um, the right version, because I, I think that, um, I, I've always felt like in adapting the musical, it wants to become something different. It wants to become a film, and that means um, probably looking at it anew in terms of the script. So we just want to make sure that, that that we can find the version that works on film. Awesome. Well, I have a viewer who would like to come in and ask you a question. Is that cool? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Hi. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Um, hi, my name is Taya Renzi. Uh, I go to Western Connecticut State University and I am from Newtown, Connecticut. Um, I was wondering if you would be able to, to discuss your process when it comes to orchestrating projects that already have music written, like American Idiot or Jagged Little Pill. That's a really good question. Um, in, in adapting something like American Idiot or Jagged Little Pill um, or the work of the Go-Go's for Head Over Heels, um, you know you're already working with something that is iconic, beloved, um, and, um, and and so you then have to sort of look at what you're doing in adapting the material. What is the, what are the, what are the who are the new characters? How are they going to um, be um, enhanced by the ensemble potentially? Um, what is the story moment in the show? Um, and then you look at the, at the song as it exists and you have to say, okay, um, I obviously, this is a, a brilliant composition that I want to keep, um, uh, make sure that I am serving and honoring. Um, and sometimes for that moment in the show, what you hear on the album really dictates uh, how it lands in the show. And then other times you look at it and see if there's maybe a different instrumentation, a different feel. Um, an example for that, my, uh, is you ought to know in Jagged Little Pill, um, because that comes from a place of kind of quiet intensity for Joe. Um, I wanted to begin a little softer, a little more rubato and let it build from a smaller place. So eventually we spill into what you hear on the album, but uh, in terms of how we rev up into it, um, I, I came up with a different treatment. Um, but if I'm doing my job right, then uh, the song is still very recognizable. Um, certainly the band, the artist is happy with how it feels in the show. Um, and and, and it, the composition is really leading the way. Um, so I, I, I've always said that that one of my heroes is George Martin, who worked with the Beatles. And uh, he added these incredible orchestrations to their work. Um, so Yesterday is a brilliant song. Um, and uh, I can't imagine it without the string quartet that George Martin added. So those pieces fit perfectly. Um, and it's still the Beatles composition. So I think in, in terms of adapting shows like Jagged Little Pill and American Idiot, that's that's kind of how I've seen my role to make sure the composition is honored and intact, but that it's uh, it's also serving the new piece of theater that we're creating. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Thank you, Taya, so much for joining. Sounds like you guys are muted. Can you still hear me? I can't I hear you can anymore. I can't hear you. Can you, you can't hear, hear you. Oh no. We're having a sound issue. Hmm. Let's see if I mute myself. But you hear me. Yeah, I can hear you perfectly. Yeah, for some reason, just see if these speakers are. Hello? Hi, you guys there? yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just unplugged these speakers. Something might have happened with them. So I'm <laughs> on my computer now. 
All right. Okay. Well, thank you so much. You're very welcome. That was a great question. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. Well, our next question is from John Flannery in Ohio. He's a rising high school senior. He wants to know what is your favorite project that you've worked on, whether as a composer, arranger, music director, music director, etc. Wow. I don't. I don't know if I can pick uh, um, a favorite because they're all so unique, and and um, I've had enormously rewarding experiences. Um, I guess. Um, I would have to say that that next to normal was um, was certainly um, one of the most special experiences I've ever had in my life. Um, getting to write that show with Brian Yorkey, who I've known for years and pretty much grew up with since college, um, and the two of us were aspiring to get to Broadway someday together. And um, it was a show that when we first started writing it, we never thought in a million years would end up on a Broadway stage, never mind getting produced at all. So the fact that that uh, it found an audience, that that audience was very passionate for it, um, and and it really changed the course of our lives and uh, made our childhood dreams come true together. Um, I think that's that's that feels like an experience that was kind of out of body and extremely special for me. Nice. Well, speaking of next to normal, one of our YouTube viewer, uh, viewers. Joaquin Gu Gonzalez wants to know, have you guys have thought about a revival of Next to Normal? <laughs> um, I think that's a dream to have any show of yours revived, to have um, a new cast and um, new audiences discover it. Certainly when I went to the Kennedy Center uh, and saw Brandon Victor Dixon and Rachel Bay Jones, um, it was thrilling to see the show come alive again. So um, so yeah, I would, I would love a revival, but I also feel like, at least for me, uh, a revival wants some space. You want to have time for the the, the piece to, to age a little bit, see how it feels in the in the in the new um, environment that's being uh, rebirthed uh, into. So, um, uh, where are we now? I think we're we're ten years. We're over ten years since Next to Normal opened on Broadway. So I I, I always thought ten years. So I I, I think. Um, there's probably a point where, at least for me, you could start to to think about a revival, um, and and again, like the film, you just want it to be um, an exciting new look at the material. Awesome. Well, I am hoping that the theater gods heard that one because I'm ready to see it again. <laughs> I hope the theater gods heard that we want to come into the theater. I hope that if I'm reviving next to normal, I would love to just be able to walk into Times Square theaters and see see theater. That's what I'm. Oh my goodness, absolutely. All right, well, I have another question for me for you. Um, this is from Nicole Wright from Deer Park, New York in Long Island. She wants to know, and she's the school secretary, how exciting. Um, <laughs> she wants to know, what are the challenges you discovered writing a show as a duo versus writing a show um, or song on your own? Is it easier to have someone to bounce ideas off of or do you like having more of the full control? Um, well, you know, I've never written a show on my own. Even if I've written lyrics like I did for Superhero, uh, I still was working side by side with John Logan and Jason Moore, the director. Um, so you're always working with other people in theater, and that's what I love about it. Um, but in terms of writing lyrics or, or collaborating, um, I mean, I, th I think I, I, uh, collaborating is a really special thing, and it's it's great to have other ideas um, and and smarter people <laughs> to work with. So, um, and also when you write a piece of music and you give it to someone and then you see um, the, the, the lyrics that they, that they come up with that you never would have, it's, 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 it's wonderful to get out of your own head. So um, uh, I definitely think that, that the collaborative process is one of the things I, I, I just love about theater. So um, I think I have a, a little bit more of a special place in my heart for collaborating with uh, lyricists when I write. Awesome. All right, well, I have another guest who would like to come on and ask you a question. Great. Hi there. Hey, how's it going? Hi. Hey, how are you? Good, thanks. Wonderful. Oh, well, I'm Jonathan, and I'm an actor based out of New York. Hi, Jonathan. And, um, hi there. Uh, and my question was, um, do you think about acting beats while you're writing your music? And if so, how and when do you like to incorporate that into your material? 
Um, I definitely think about that when I'm writing music because you're telling story on stage and you want uh, the music to flow the way a monologue, a conversation, a scene would unfold. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I, I, I definitely um, think about Roboto versus um, being in in time, in a groove, or um, in, a, in a flow of the song. Um, uh, you know where the rests come in terms of the the lyric, um, how something scans um, uh, when you're setting a lyric. Um, so, and, and the the great thing also is that as much work as I put into that, when it when it gets uh, Put into the hands of the performer, you learn a whole new uh, wealth of information from what they do. And there are certain things that I look at on the page and they go, why did I scan it that way? It's much more natural the way they're doing it. Or they may add a pause, or they may suggest that something stay out of time when I had originally written it with feels. So um, you're always learning and, and the performer is really a great gauge of how something wants to feel in the moment. But, but this is musical theater. So um, by definition, uh, as the composer, I'm, I'm trying to think about the acting beats when I'm writing. Awesome, wonderful, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you so much for joining us, Jonathan. Thank you. All right, our next question is from, ooh, I hope I do not mess this name up, from Tammy Dale from, the, from Birmingham in the United Kingdom. Uh, she wants to know if there will be a production of Next to Normal in the UK, and if so, will it be in London? <laughs> a um, lot of normal questions today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and similar. I would love love for Next to Normal to come to the UK and and to come to uh, to London to the West End. Or um, I haven't spent uh, as much time as I would I would love to uh, in in uh, um, the uh, in the. Uh, the UK theater scene. So um, I couldn't even say for sure where the right theater would be, um, but but it's it's such a wonderful, vibrant um, theater scene. And I've been I've been jealous of all my friends who have shows running and who, who have wanted to take my family over there and get to experience something I've written. So yeah, I'm hopeful that uh, that next normal and 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 hopefully other things I've worked on will find their way. I know uh, Bring It On uh, was going to uh, embark on a, on a on a big tour before the shutdown happened. Um, American Idiot has been over there. Um, but um, but yeah, we'll see what happens with Next to Normal. That would certainly be a wish of mine. Awesome. This question is from Sean Horace on YouTube. And he wants to know, do you have anybody who you draw inspiration from when you're orchestrating musicals? Um, there are so many brilliant orchestrators of musicals. Um, you know, certainly, uh, uh, Michael Starobin, who I've been lucky enough to work with, um, Jonathan Tunick, brilliant orchestrators, um, Larry Hockman, um, Doug Besterman. There are a number of, of, of orchestrators that um, I, I came into this industry uh, revering. Um, Jason Robert Brown is a brilliant orchestrator and I've been a musical director for Jason. So I've gotten a chance to play those orchestrations and, and rehearse them. Um, and um, I also have learned they a great work out, aren't they? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and also Alex Lacamoire, who um, I got to work, I've gotten to orchestrate side by side with on on, on a couple of projects. Um, but but the work that he's generated, um, it's just just gargantuan, and 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 um, it's a uh, it, it's a real privilege to 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 be doing that uh, in theater. And to see, here comes my dog. I told you. Um, <laughs> he's, he's like, don't you know? Don't put yourself in that category too fast. <laughs> um, but I, um, it, it's really, a, it's a privilege, and you see how much, how much brilliant work is generated. Um, and I'm always listening and always trying to learn and 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 be and be better because I, I came to this really in a sort of learning by doing way. I sort of threw myself into orchestrating, um, and um, and and I still feel like I'm learning. Well, I would put you in that category, so don't <laughs> count yourself out, <laughs> all right? Thank you. Thank you. Um, this, com this question is from someone on YouTube also. Um, they loved Freaky Friday, and they wanted to know about your experience working on it. Uh, I love Freaky Friday. Um, it's been on my, in, on, in my house quite a bit because my son, my youngest son, 
Charlie has suddenly decided he's obsessed with it. So he's been playing, <laughs> he's been playing the album and he's been watching the Disney Channel movie that we made. Um, to get to write for Disney, first of all, um, has been a dream. And um, they are just uh, an incredible um, organization. They, they, they just took such good care of me and continue to. And um, for, for, for someone who comes from a family that spends every time, every summer or every, uh, um, I shouldn't say summer, every spring or every New Year's they can at the Magic Kingdom. Um, you know, we uh, we live and breathe Disney. So um, <laughs> on something I've worked on, um, I get goosebumps. But also just being able to adapt that story. Uh, it's, it's, it's a story that uh, Freaky Friday kind of spawned all the body switching musicals. Mary Rogers' brilliant book. Um, and, and there's something that's so human about um, experiencing someone's lives, uh, someone's life, and seeing what they go through and how that affects how you view them, how you view yourself. It's, it's the ultimate lesson to be taught. Um, so um, I, I just um, I just think that that's a story that I felt was a gift to get to adapt. I should also mention Chris Ashley, who um, was our director um, on that piece, um, and um, and and. Uh, getting to write more songs with Brian. That was um, that was a thrill. That, that's a score that I, I, I truly love. So um, it was a gift to work with Disney, a gift to work on Freaky Friday. And um, and, and and I listen to it now and I, I still feel very emotional thinking about that time making that show. That's awesome. Well, our next question comes from uh, Curtis Lee um, in Southern California. Um, <laughs> this is awesome. Uh, she goes, I met you after Next to Normal on the night before the Tonys. I asked you if you had a spot at home picked out for where your award would go. You laughed and you said you hadn't thought about it yet. Where is it sitting? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Tony Award is on my piano. As it should be. I think yeah, that's a great spot. <laughs> yes, it's been there and I don't think it's really moved. I think we keep it, we've kept it there for years. Wow. Um, Sarah Walken Fox from Long Island wants to know, when you compose, does the music just come to you? Do you have to think about it and experiment? Can you explain your process for composing and has the process been the same for every score you've written? Um, composing is, for me, is just kind of a feeling. Uh, I sit down and um, I just, just start to create on the piano. Um, and sometimes that vamp, that those notes will take me somewhere. Sometimes I'll, I'll maybe spend a few more minutes on it and then I'll abandon it and kind of walk away and come back. But um, it's really just something that if I'm looking at a lyric, um, I'll start to sort of hear music in my head and I'll start to try to work it out. If it's music first, I'll sit down and try to, and try to work it out and, um, um, and, and just sort of go with a, a feeling or a, 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 a vamp. The, 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 the BMI Musical Theater Workshop, where um, I first went after college to learn about writing musicals, Brian Yorkie and I both went there together. Um, spent a lot of time talking about vamps and and played classic ones. Um, you know, John Kander is master of the vamp, um, and and so that's kind of the the way I approach it. What what is the vamp that's going to be born today, and how's it going? What, what's it going to feel like? How's it going to um, start to morph, and 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 what kind of what kind of uh, emotional moment is it speaking to for, for a show? Or again, if I have the lyric, that will inform the quality of the band from the, the music I'm writing. Awesome, cool. Well, I have a special guest that I would like to bring on today. Um, she has been in something that you've worked on and I don't want to give it away, so. Oh, wow. <laughs> Um, what are you doing? I just drove by Lincoln Center yesterday for I think the first time here, and I saw our 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 uh, poster or the beautiful you know the advertisement in front of Lincoln Center is, is still up there. It made me very happy and sad. <laughs> but, yeah, all the emotions. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> yeah, but I'm I'm so looking forward to getting back and and finishing what we started, and so glad to see you. you. Me too. How are you doing? Uh, you know, living the dream. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to hold it together like everybody else. I'm 
Um, I've mastered, I think, like everyone else, the art of making bread. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very good, very good. Yeah, how about you? Oh, wow, what have we been doing? Just a lot of family time. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, uh, and and trying to stay creative. I mean, it's, it's like it's like what people ask about about writing during this time and being being productive in that way. It's 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 kind of challenging because you you always creating is about a safe, happy, positive space, and and so much of this has felt the opposite of that. So so um, totally understand. I mean, I'm not a musical writer, but I like to write songs, and I just think, okay, be productive, be productive, and I try to sit down and stay focused and it's just the hardest thing in the world and it's yeah. even hard to sing you know yeah. because yeah. I, I i need to have a free space to do that yeah. so i totally yeah. understand where you're coming from and a happy space to do that but anyway yeah <laughs> here we are we'll get there we'll get there but it's something that uh, more people have told me not to force so i've just been trying to let it come to me yeah just be good yeah be great be, be gracious to yourself is what i'm trying to learn yep yep exactly yeah. well said Carmen, where have you been during quarantine? I have been in LA for the most part. We, my husband and I did a little excursion to Lake Tahoe for a few days, which was absolutely necessary for my mental state. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but mainly just hunkering down here and wearing my face mask all the time, which is a good idea for everybody. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we are very good at that here in New York, doing it for months. So. But it's become normal. I wonder if that that will be the new normal. That just you know, we we will we will yeah. sort of adapt to that. I don't know. I don't know. So many things that I never thought I would see. <laughs> I'm seeing here. I know. I know. Yeah. And the end of the sentence is always, who knows? <laughs> yeah. well, Aaron, I, could you tell I, us a little bit about working in a show that Tom has worked on and your experience? Um, just like all together working with him. Oh, he's just the coolest. He, um, every time I think, oh God, I'm so scared to, oh, can I, can I relook at this line or this little, how, how I'm going to flip this or how I'm going to sing this. And, and he's like, you know, he's just so free to suggestions and he's just free to working with you. He's very, um, mal malleable. Is that, it? is that, is that working? <laughs> <laughs> and um, no, it's it's just the coolest. Um, and the, the the lines, the stuff that he comes up with is just kind of mind blowing. The 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 musicality and the and the just it's um it's it's my it's he's he's incredible. Of course, you know this, but thank you, Carmen. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> we had Carmen and I shared a um. A moment that I think about a lot. We we were d doing a story on a song that we wrote for "Flying Over Sunset." It's one of my favorite songs uh, in the show, and it's an it's a new one called "How." And uh, uh, I think New York Magazine um, at some point they've been working on a story, and um, and Carmen and I went in to perform it. I think the week before the shutdown. I think it was like the Tuesday morning before we shut down, and I just remembered like walking in there and I was like, should I even be here? I'm nursing a little bit of a cough. I don't know what I'm supposed you to be doing. Carmen said, we are all feeling the same way. And the two of us went and we performed this. And I kind of had a feeling <laughs> in the moment, this might be the last time for a while that we're together, that we're, but I think about that so much that we walked into that room and, and, and did that song in that morning. Tom, I put that at the very back of my mind because it was so horrifying because we had changed the lyrics so many times. And um, I was absolutely horrified. And then, of course, you turn on the morning news with coffee and and it seems that, you know, we'd gotten that kind of gist that things were going to sh shut down and lock down. And uh, and all, I had all that going on in my head, as well as, you know, the symptoms of thinking, oh, God, do I have it? Uh -huh. And then, and then to walk in and hair, makeup, and and do the song that I have only just hardly learned. <laughs> no, I can't put it back in my brain. You just you just brought that all back. Thanks. I hope. Yeah. Well, it's. It, I I imagine that that performance is going to be something we're going to look back on, and and for the for the context of it, I know for me it's going to mean a lot. But but it was. Yeah, oh gosh, the song. Yeah, the song. You know, we finally got there, and I could not wait to get on that stage and perform it in front of people and to be able to do 
it, it gave me so much room to do everything that I like to do. And so thank you. Thank oh, you. it's, a, it's, it's, it's a, it, Johnny, when you see this, it's a gargantuan performance. I'm just sitting over here thinking, well, wow, I just can't wait to see this <laughs> up again. It's, it's mind-blowingly beautiful, as, as all of Carmen's work is, so. Oh, thank you. You wrote it. <laughs> well, that's just amazing. Carmen, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. I um, hope that you are safe and healthy. I'm trying my best. And, <laughs> and you too. Please stay safe, everybody. Yes, Look stay after safe. Yourself. Well, sending you guys love. Thank you. Sending you sending it all sending it back. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Love you. Well, Tom. Oh, that was great to see her. Oh, thank you for that. That was a real special treat. Thank you. I'm so glad you enjoyed that because I have someone else to bring on now. Okay, great. <laughs> oh, yay. <laughs> oh, my God. Surprise! It's like with love morning. This is, oh, <laughs> hi. Hi. Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Hi, Johnny. Hi, Adrian. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Hanging in there day by day. Where are you right now? I am in New York. I am in New York and I've been here for a while and I'm like trying to figure out how to get out. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm here in New York. Where are you? I'm in New Jersey in my lovely parents' home. I just graduated this uh, in May, so. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Instead of moving to the city, however, you know, I came to take a little stay back in Jersey while everything's figuring itself out. Yeah, yeah, save those coins. Tom, yeah, look at your puppy. I know, I know. I'm home, like the, the kids are, are, are all out getting, um, they're doing their checkups. They're doing their summer checkups. Oh, so I got the dog and you might hear a little <laughs> every so often, so I apologize for that. But um, What's your dog's name? Lucky. Lucky, hi Lucky. Me, not so lucky, but lucky. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, uh, he's a lot, but he's very cute. And the kids adore him, as you can imagine. Adrian has spent some really wonderful time with my kids. Yeah. Um, they, they adore her. They look up to her. They revere her. So she's <laughs> the most kind-hearted human being. Oh, thanks. You got, you got the best family. Okay. Um, I adore them. Um, but I have a question for you, OK? Yeah. Ready? Yes. Colleen Sproul in Hell's Kitchen would like to know when and how did you get your big break? How did I get my big break? I don't. I guess, what do you? I guess it's like what do you consider a big break? <laughs> I know. As we all know we work so hard, and it's like it's a it's a it's a number of step of steps that take you to. Um, so I, I I guess the thing that really sort of happened for me was next to normal and. Um, uh, because my first musical, which I would also say is a, I, I could say it was a big break having uh, High Fidelity produced and put on Broadway um, and, and just an, an enormous, uh, enormously talented group of collaborators and, and, and producers and designers. And then the show only ran 10 days. And suddenly all of the things that I thought I had given up and wouldn't have to go back to, um, because um, because of this big break, you know, jobs that I was doing to su support myself, I suddenly had to go beg to have back, um, so I could support my family. I had an eighteen month old son at that point, and just trying to figure out how we're going to make ends meet. So uh, so then next to normal happened, and um, and thankfully that was life changing for me, and and Ooh. like I could I could actually stay in the in the theater game and find a find a career. So, um, but it, it's really the 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 thing is it's it's. It's, I, I, we all dream of, because I also wanted to be a singer songwriter, you dream of being in the bitter end and suddenly someone comes, it's like, I'm gonna sign you to a record deal. I'm gonna make all your dreams come true and you're, you're clinking shape or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, it's, it's, it's a lot of work and, and you just have to build on every door that's opened and it's gonna be a lot of doors that, that finally lead you to, to where you hopefully want to be. Yeah, I guess it really is about how do you measure success and like as an artist, which is which can be tricky sometimes. I, especially it's like financial success or artistic fulfillment. Like you know, d depends on which way you measure success. 
Yeah. And um, your work is astounding and you're one of my favorite people to work with. Likewise, thank and you. And I'm just such a fan and have been <laughs> for so yeah, long now. Me too. And, uh, <laughs> You know, Adrian, uh, just just like like Carmen before her, you know, Adrian is one of those people that takes what you give and and just makes it, you just go to a place where you never even dreamed. I mean, it's like I listen to Adrian sing things I've written, and I can't believe that that's something that I gave her. I just, it's just the greatest honor and gift, and uh, um, and 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 just the warmest human being. To um, all of that great art comes from a big heart. Um, filled with with love and, and talent and empathy, um, so um, I'm so so thrilled for all of the wonderful things that have happened, that are happening, and that are going to happen. <laughs> I just want to be a part of all of them, so I'm going to keep bothering you for. Yes, please. It's my favorite fall. thing. <laughs> It's, it's a crazy time right now, but I'm really grateful for this moment of pause to take a second and be grateful for all those opportunities that I've had thus far and all those moments of growth in our careers and our lives. We kind of have a, a time of pause to reflect on everything and appreciate it a bit more. And that's been really lovely. I like just got off the phone with my grandmother for like an hour. And like when would I have had time to like actually sit down and talk to my grandma for like an hour. And there are moments like that that I really treasured in this time as painful as it's been. It's also been unbelievably rewarding in other ways. And it's just really, really, really nice to see people that you've worked with and that you've grown immensely since you worked with them and to be able to truly appreciate them for who they are, but also the artists that they are as well, which is That's you. Good. We've grown up. We've grown up. I mean, bring it on as well. It's going to be a decade soon. We were looking at <laughs> pictures of opening night. It's crazy. Oh, but, my God. Um, I love making that show. What a, what a, what a great group. I mean, that, that was talk about wanting to be in the room. I mean, that was- Oh my just, gosh, yeah. And Andy Blankenbuehler approached me about it. Lynn was was involved and Alex was involved and Jeff Witte and, and, and so it was just, you know, that was that was an easy yes. And also just how much fun I knew it was going to be. And then yeah. that, that incredible group of artists to come and make that show with us. It was a good time. And a lot of people don't know this, but the first time I read that script, I think I read for Nautica. I think I was like- <laughs> Really? I was like, Nautica. Wow. <laughs> I always see it's Danielle. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's so funny. Um, yeah. So it's just been wild to kind of see that. And I listen back to the album and I'm like, wow, Beyonce must feel like this when she listens to Destiny's Child album. She's like, what is that voice? Who is that person? <laughs> like, you I mean, this child? there's no top. It just keeps going up and up. It's it's amazing. I feel like I feel like there was that moment in in uh, it's either Friday Night Jackson or it's all happening where they just kept like riffing you higher. <laughs> <laughs> higher, then, higher, louder, higher. Yeah, I, yeah, it was just like, and it was fine. Just it was no yeah. problem. It was, it. it was incredible. <laughs> Andy would always get angry at us because he's like, you realize they're going to be flipping around, right? And, you know, and we were like, oh, they'll be able to sing it. And then in rehearsal one day, we were like, oh, oh, we get what oh, you mean. They can't. Yeah. We <laughs> Oh man, what a cool, cool experience. Yeah. So awesome. So Thank wild. You. I'm like sitting in my childhood room and I'm like, I remember like 10 years ago when I was 12, like laying in my bed and like listening to this album. <laughs> and I'm like, this is like really crazy that I'm like with two people who like basically like built musical theater for me as a child. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but we get the same pangs and it's yeah. it's just like, it's a, it's a blip. I mean, I, yeah. I think about that song a lot. I'm thinking about, might as well enjoy the trip a lot because I'm hoping that this is all just going to be a blip right now. But um, I, yeah. I, I really just go by so fast. And, and we really were just in Atlanta, just in workshops, just opening, you know? So so it's it, it goes by fast. And I think you really do have to just take advantage of everything that comes your way, every loving moment you can have to just get everything you can out of it. Yeah. And it's really, really nice to see the the growth and the life that Bring It On has had. You know, you were, Johnny, you were listening to it when you were 12 and there's so many kids who do the show in schools. And every time someone reaches out to me and say, I'm doing it in school, I'm like, oh, be careful. <laughs> I'm like, please be careful. <laughs> That's what we all think. That's the only thing I ever worry about. <laughs> 
take care of your body, please. Do take care of yourself, that. please. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's how you know you've made it when like literally like every high school in the US is like doing it at the same time. Oh, I hope so. At the so. exact same time, yeah. You can all feel the like rumbling of people flipping down and landing on their feet. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely insane. This has just been so lovely. I just adore you, Tom, and I want I'm so happy I could be here to surprise you. <laughs> Adrian, it was a great surprise. I miss you and I hope I'll see you soon. And um, Me too. I'll have stuff to share with you soon too. In, oh, in amazing. Yeah, and yeah. this is a blip. It's a good blip though. We're gonna get a lot of great things out of this blip. So everybody take those things with you and hold yes. on to them. Yes, I agree. I agree. Yes. Awesome. Thank Johnny, you so much Johnny. for joining us. You are awesome and amazing. Thank you, Johnny. I can't wait to see everything that you do oh, when the world you. opens back up. Stop. Yeah. Yes, I can't wait. Me too. Me too. Yes. So amazing. Excited. I hope you stay safe. Uh, stay, stay safe uh, in the city and have a great time. You as well. Everybody, wear your masks. Bye, Tom. Yes. Bye, Adrian. See you soon. Oh, wow. That what a beautiful like, human oh, being. Great. Yeah, yeah. Well, it means so much that they agreed to come <laughs> and say hello to me. I must be doing something right. I, uh, that's what I'm saying. I mean, hey, two of the best, biggest stars on Broadway want to come surprise you. Yeah, that was, um, that was really special. Thank you. Awesome. Well, I have some more questions for you if you're ready to get back at it. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. So I have a question from uh, Joaquin Gonzalez from San, San Antonio, Texas. And he wants to know, of course, more next to normal questions. Uh, he wants to know, is there a full pro shot of next to, at next to normal? And if so, will it ever be like out to be watched or released? Is there a full, what, what do you say? Like professional shot of next to normal. A full professional shot. What what does that mean? I guess like is there a been a professional recording of the stage version? Oh, um, I'm I'm pretty sure Next to Normal was filmed for Lincoln Center. Aha. Uh -huh. Um, so if you're in New York when things hopefully are back up and running soon, and um, uh, Lincoln Center has a, has an incredible library of of um, shows that have been preserved and recorded on Broadway. Um, so, um, so that's the one that I know of um, that exists. Uh, I don't know of any any others, at least any others that have been <laughs> um, allowed to happen. Uh, um, yeah, that that it has been. The original Broadway cast was um, uh, uh, recorded for for the Lincoln Center Library. Oh, that's so awesome! So, if you want to go watch it, I'm sure that you can go to the Lincoln Center Library when everything opens and take. Yeah, I'm not sure what the protocol is for whether you have to be a member or how you have gain access, but um, I'm sure that can be figured out. But it was filmed, so. Yeah. Okay, our next question is from Julie, uh, I'm gonna say Ewing from Facebook, and she wants to know if there was ever a time where you woke up and you had to run to your piano with a creative breakthrough. Um, there have been times where I have uh, dreamed something and, and gone to capture it. I don't know if anything's ever turned into something, but um, I definitely have had music in my head, new music in my head when I've awakened. Um, so yeah, that is definitely something that, that, that has happened. Something I remember, I remember driving to the O'Neill uh, in 2017 where I was working on Superhero and I got an idea for a song and um, I had to take out my phone and record it um, in a safe way and uh, without anyone picking <laughs> text or be on the phone. I just literally was just trying to record something and so I didn't forget it. So um, that was, uh, uh, that became a song called um, If I Only Had One Day, kind of the, 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 the idea of that song, the context of the song. So I recorded the melody and then when I got to the O'Neill that, that afternoon, I wrote it. Wow, so all, all those voice memos turned into something after a while. I have a lot of them, yeah. Hopefully they're protected. <laughs> they don't get out into the world and people start messing with them. And not all of them are, not everything you, you do is meant to be shared with the masses. <laughs> <laughs> you're walking around one day and you're like, yeah, I think I that might be on a voice memo I had at one point. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. 
but um but no that that's a great thing i mean having having that at your um you know at, at, at your beck and call to be able to to be able to record something so you don't forget it because that, that that's a lot of what happens with with, with me is that I'll, I'll create something at, in a moment of, of inspiration and then an hour later i'll think what was that <laughs> Um, and I used to just pray I would remember it, but now now I have it recorded, which is great. At least you know you can remember it. Maybe your children will pick up on a tune one day and they'll be like, hey, you'll be like, hey, wait, I was yep. singing that the other day. You remember? <laughs> exactly right. Exactly right. <laughs> okay. Well, this question is from Anne A um, on YouTube. And I guess I'm going to expand on the question for her. She wants to know, like, do you work on... Uh, in order when you're writing songs for a show or do you kind of just write them and then plug them in where you feel they fit? Well, that's interesting. Uh, what we, what we normally do, um, or I think what you should do is outline your show and song spot it, uh, to some degree. So you have a sense as to, um, what the score is going to be and, and, um, and moments that you really can musicalize. Cause the big question for a story is, does it sing? And the way to answer that is to, come up with songs that feel very natural um, and and I wouldn't say easy to write, nothing is easy to write, but certainly you see your way into each musical moment. And then you don't necessarily work in order. Um, I don't I don't necessarily start with the opening number. Um, Brian and I worked very much out of order with Next Normal because we spent so many years working on it. So many songs came and went, couldn't really get a, a sense of whether we were doing anything in sequence. Um, but when I wrote Superhero, because uh, John Logan had written a, uh, a draft that, that he really song spotted, um, I was able to kind of go in order and write each song sequentially. Um, so there's no one way to do it, but I think because these things take a while, um, Almost Famous was a similar thing. Um, I kind of beat through the show and, and, and it was just, a, it was a great groove to get into, to write a song a day and just be like, okay, what's the next song in the show? How does what I just wrote inform what that wants to be? So you get a sense of the playlist. Um, but yeah, there's no, there's no rhyme or reason. I mean, even thinking to flying over sunset, we did the first act and then the second act, we, we, we read the whole first act and then took a break. And, um, I should say in, in time, we, we spent a summer working on the first act and then in the, in the fall, I think we created the second act. Um, but I don't think we actually went in order. And again, thinking back to all the shows I've worked on, so many things come and go. <laughs> you get a, you start to lose the thread of what is the actual order and, and, and when you did what. Yeah, well, and Anna wanted to know specifically about Jagged Little Pills. So like when you were uh, working on that show and the songs are already written, did you end up like switching a lot of songs in the order that they were and figuring out, hey, maybe this doesn't work so well with this plot point, but it does work better with that? Well, that was really a Diablo Cody um, puzzle to, to, to figure out. And, and she did, uh, I can't say enough about how she cracked the show, came up with this wonderful story, um, and these great characters. And so my work um, was so much easier because she sent a draft where she had, again, she had song spotted and I was able to just pick up on her flow. And that's where, that's one where I think I really did work in order because she had established it in such a clear way so I was able to start with the opening. And, and then when you get into the room um, with Diane um, and Larby, our choreographer, and of course, Alanis, um, uh, you, you then start to um, ask questions and things start to change. We spent a wonderful uh, few days, uh, two summers ago, I think, um, uh, with Alanis. Um, actually, uh, uh, an opening night present that she sent this, this, this blanket that has songs um you know it was, i think this is this was the representation of the of the the whiteboard um scribblings that that we had wow. in her house um newly um uh song spotting the show and and coming up with a with a, with a new outline um and and it, it incorporated songs that she played for us new songs that we hadn't ever heard so um so that experience was just was just really special and um uh again it, it, musicals really depend on on, on the story it's the, the the book is just i think the most underappreciated and most important facet to writing a musical um and 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 what diablo did um was just enormous and made my work um flow so much e so much uh easier 
That's awesome. That's awesome. Okay, okay, so, so Patrick, Patrick from, from Philadelphia, Philadelphia. Yeah. wants to know, did you listen to musicals often in your teenage years? And is there any specific musical which represents that period of time for you? That's a good question. Um, for me, um, as a kid, and especially teenager, I was much more wrapped up in the world of, um, I mean, I would say pop rock music, but but the things that were speaking to me were um, a, a group of so singer songwriters that, that made me want to uh, basically become a recording artist. So Billy Joel, Elton John, um, uh, you know, Simon Garfunkel, James Taylor, um, those were some of the artists that I was I was listening to. So especially with Billy Joel, I was writing a lot of piano based um, uh, pop rock music that I was hoping to maybe form a band one day. Um, I should also say Bruce Springsteen, um, especially because Roy Bitten, who played plays plays piano in the E Street Band, um, is is just like a legendary pianist and someone who also informed the way I play. And um, so for me, Broadway and, and and musical theater was was something that I would. Um, experience um, with my family. You know, we would go for 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 trips into the city on the weekend. It wasn't something that I, I I saw necessarily as the art form I was going to pursue. And then when I discovered um, Sondheim and and Kander and Ebb, and went back and listened to um, you know the American Songbook, um, and I I, I uh, two shows Cabaret and Into the Woods that that kind of knocked me. Um, and showed me what's possible in terms of how how musical theater not only uh, is it, it beautiful songs that you love, but 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 characters and a story that really affect you. And I think that the the seeds of Next to Normal um, uh, were were planted with with those shows that 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 made me really want to affect an audience um, with a personal story. And um, and and so the fact that I'm able to tell those kinds of stories is a real I think privilege for me, um, and but but those were some of the the earliest shows that that really showed me what what was possible. How did you know that you wanted to transition into writing musicals instead of writing pop songs? Uh, it was it was at Columbia. Um, my um, my wife, who um, was my uh, I was dating at the time. Um, was involved in a, a student written show at Columbia called The Varsity Show, which has this wonderful history. Some of the people who uh, worked on it are Rogers and Hart um, and Oscar Hammerstein and, and Janine Tesori and Terrence McNally. Um, um, I believe Brandon Victor Dixon was a, was a cast member uh, of The Varsity Show. Um, and, um, and there are numerous others. Um, so it's got this wonderful history at, at Columbia um, and um, Rita suggested I meet this other student, Brian Yorkie, and perhaps the two of us would want to write the hundredth <laughs> and the All Varsity show together. And I'd never written a score before. I, for me, it was it was hard enough to create my, uh, you know, hopefully thought provoking singer songwriter <laughs> compositions. Um, so to, um, to suddenly think I could take on a whole score, I was, I was really nervous about it. And um, uh, but she looks like that one worked out. <laughs> yeah, and that's where the collaboration with Brian was born at Columbia. And that's suddenly awesome. that was really the thing because rather than just writing for my own voice, I was really loving writing for a cast of characters, creating vocal arrangements, um, and seeing how an audience in the in in the course of a story reacts to to what you want to say. Wow, it's really those like really random instances that like further our career, isn't it? <laughs> You never know. We actually wrote a song called "You Never Know" and "If Then," <laughs> but it's true. Um, just you just hope that you are in the moment you're meant to be in when your life is going to change. And uh, I barely got into Columbia. I was kind of a I was kind of a disaster. My my junior and senior year really almost almost messed up my chances of going there. And uh, if I hadn't gone there, my whole life would be. I'd like to think that that I would have found what I found, but finding my family, marrying Rita, um, finding Brian and, and musical theater, I don't know if that would have happened if I hadn't been there at that time. So if then was really born out of those 
types of thoughts. Are we all meant to find the life that we find? And what are the moments that seem insignificant at the time, but change the course of, of your life? I think we can all do that thought experiment. So uh -huh. one little thing that somehow in that junior, senior year allowed me to find my way to Columbia uh, really changed everything for me. Wow. Wow. Well, we have, well, we have a question from, from, from YouTube, from, from Jack Rea. He wants to know, what was it like working on SpongeBob as an orchestrator slash music supervisor, and how do you choose an MD for a project? Um, working on SpongeBob was just an enormously um, gratifying, beautiful experience. Um, Tina Landau is someone that I had enormous respect and admiration for um, and uh, was really wanting to find a project I could work with her on. So when I found out that she was involved, was conceiving it um, and um, directing, I, uh, I jumped the chance to be interviewed. Um, I didn't know Kyle Jarrow, uh, previous to that experience, but um, uh, just a gifted, wonderful writer. Um, you know, his, his work that, um, that I came to discover through knowing him. Um, and, uh, and then of course, watching what he contributed for SpongeBob. Um, it was just a, a really lucky, um, endeavor for me. And, uh, and when I heard Tina's, uh, what her, what her concept was that, that all of these incredible artists were going to be contributing songs and I might be the person who gets to, you know, make that stew. Um, and, also get into an animated world where I could be writing that very different style, a number of, of different styles of music. Um, it just felt like it was going to be um, great fun and, and it was going to teach me a lot. But um, what I didn't expect, I should have, but, but what, what a wonderful surprise was just how emotional, what a, what a, what a, what a punch that show packed. I think of it now um, often in this time, just, just, uh, how much beauty um, and 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 humanity is in that show. So um, I'm very grateful that I got pulled into that world. I'm very grateful that I got to I got to collaborate with Tina and Kyle and all those wonderful gifted artists. Chris Catelli, of course, um, making this this great word yeah. tap dance number with him is something that's going to be the great joys of, of my career. And um, and everyone in Nickelodeon and you know the the whole SpongeBob world. So that was a really wonderful experience. Um, and then in terms of, of musical directors, um, I've been really fortunate that I, that I work with, um, uh, I, I work with great talented musical directors and I'm always, I'm always trying to also, um, find uh, new talent. Uh, I know that for me, someone had to give me a chance. Um, and, and, um, you know, I, I, I want to be, uh, someone who is, uh, for, for all those people who are dreaming of coming into this art form. Um, and establishing establishing themselves in musical theater, um, you know, I, I I take it upon myself to also um, be finding those voices and new people that want to get into this business and 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 learn how to do it and learn how to be musical directors, um, and not just musical directors, orchestrators, um, supervisors, arrangers. Um, you know, it's 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 it's, it's we, it wants to be an ever expanding and especially inclusive art form that we have here in, in musical theater. So. Um, uh, I've, I've worked with great ones and I'm really excited for all the new great musical directors that I'm going to get to discover and get a chance to collaborate with. That's so awesome. And on that note, for your final question, what is one piece of advice you have to anybody who uh, wants to get started as a music director, orchestrator, arranger, writer? Um, I, I think the best thing to do is just always be open to learning. And, and having experiences where you get to jump into something that might make you a little nervous. I know I jumped into a lot of things that made me nervous. Um, and, um, and just don't doubt yourself. Um, if, 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 you've, if you've worked hard, if you've had that, that dream and, 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 and you've prepared yourself, um, then, then just look for opportunities where someone can, can, can say to you, um, uh, when someone can see your voice, see, see a passion that you bring. Um, and um, th again, this, I always talk about collaboration, but 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 anybody that works in musical theater, it's it, it's collaborative in terms of 
the team you work on in terms of your interaction with performers, designers. Um, and, and I think that that's just something that, that makes it a big hearted, beautiful um, endeavor. So, so, so be passionate, be collaborative, um, try to study some really hard music that's gonna challenge you. <laughs> because as we know, there are lots of things in musical theater that are quite challenging. And the more versatile you are, the more, the more um, styles you can play and really be, um, uh, and, and, and you can really be in charge of and, um, and knowledgeable about, um, the more jobs you're gonna get. Because if you can walk into any room and just say, oh yeah, I know that, I know that, I can do that. Um, but it's a, it's, it's a really, it's, a, it's a, especially musical directing is such, it's such a people skill kind of thing I've, I've found just to, to be able to, to direct a room, control a room, um, inspire a room, um, organize, be able to talk to, to the, you know, group these people on this in terms of vocal types and, and just be able to do that fast because lots of times you don't get nearly as much time to teach music as you would like. So, um, the more you can just kind of riff off and 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 um, and be in charge and 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 just make things happen and happen fast, um, that's going to be a great thing. And 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 as long as you show up and you're able to do that, you're just going to keep working. Um, so as I said before, when I was talking with Adrian about doors being open, those are doors that 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 open. And once it's open, um, make sure that that that's, that that it stays open, and and, and you'll, then people will just keep calling you. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. It has been an absolute pleasure to get to listen to you talk about your experiences. And I hope that when everything opens up, I get to see all the things that you're working on. Um, and I'm just very excited for that experience. Thank you. This has been a real pleasure. It's been wonderful. It's been heartwarming, as I said, especially to see friends drop by. So thank you for that. And everyone just just stay positive and theater is so important art is so important we will all be back we will be stronger um and um and it's just just really important that we, that we stay positive and and uh and, and and we'll get through this absolutely make sure you follow tom kit i believe that his link just went up below um and thank you so much for joining us thank you so much johnny stay safe and be well okay absolutely you too okay take care take care Thank you guys so much for joining us. Make sure you join us on Wednesday at one o'clock. We'll be talking to the extraordinary Kathleen Marshall and join us Friday at 1 p.m. We'll be we, where we will be talking to um, Manhattan School of Music and um, Marymount Manhattan College. Thank you for joining us. Make sure you follow us at The Growing Studio and at Playbill. Have a good one.